Hey, oh. welcome everybody to Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Rick. I'm Dave. And uh, t what, you weren't ready? I wasn't ready. <laughs> I wasn't ready. Actually, I was. I was totally ready. You totally were. ready. The owner was giving us a countdown. She was. Yeah. It's tough not to be ready. Uh, so today we're painting some uh, weird miniatures for Malifaux, or Malifaux by Weird. Malifaux by Weird. Um, yep. I am going weird to be games. painting Relic Hunters. And I'm going to be painting a Shadow Emissary. I like them. Mm. They look so good. So I have a few of them put together already. I've got uh, Lucas McCabe off the oh, horse. Oh, are we going to look at, uh, we'll look at yours first? So we've got cool. Lucas. Okay. And then uh, i got the three um, Wastels here as well. Wastrels. Wastrels. Yep. Okay. These guys are cool. Oh. Oh. There we go. Yeah. So those guys. Cool. Yeah. You gonna do them all today? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get at least one done. Cool. But uh, oh. you know, save some for you know for Thursday. Thursday. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. And which one are you doing? Again? I am painting. Uh, oh, actually, let's put up the one that we're saving for uh, Gretchen. Oh no, that's not for Gretchen. No. No. Oh. The dog and the horse. Are oh, for the Gretchen. dog and the horse are for Gretchen. Yeah. My bad. My bad. There we go. Gretchen's getting the dog and the horse. Because she wanted those. This is true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> cool. So the one I'm painting is the Shadow Emissary. Let's see if we can get him to spin around without oh, his yeah. tail hitting anything. And if you can find all the Dragon Balls, he'll grant you a wish. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful cool. piece right there. It is. Yeah, yeah it's really nice. Uh, let's say hi to Christopher and Chris Cox and Carl and Chantel. Hi, everybody. Just ignore that seam on the back. <laughs> oh yeah, you did mention that before the program that yep. uh, the seam is very prominent in the yeah across the belly. Mm -hmm. I got most of it from the front, but uh, yeah, I just missed that one on the back. Oh, that looks good. One thing I did as well mm -hmm. um, when we were talking about sub assemblies last week, right? Um, we talked about them for the dreadnought. We talked about them for the big space plane, the Stormbird. Mm -hmm. um, I was worried about this guy, and I thought that I'd leave the uh, the whiskers off. The mustache that right. he's got, uh, but they're actually sculpted onto the the head. Oh, okay. There. Yeah. So what I did is. Oh. Did you magnetize? No, I didn't magnetize it. Magnetizing it would have been crazy, but uh, yeah, I just um, blue tacked the head on. Okay. So that when I primed it, it got the priming, the zenithal priming from the same mm -hmm. point, but now I can paint this separately. And I can get in around here and dry brush all those scales right. without worrying about breaking the, the mustache. The whiskers. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. And because these scales here are a lot different on top mm -hmm. of the head, then uh, I don't have to worry about that kind of thing. Okay, I'll throw cool. that under the close cam there. There we go. Oh, yeah, they are. So it's smaller, so they can be picked out with highlighting. Right. Whereas the th sort of the hundreds and hundreds of scales on this guy. Oh, yeah. Dry brushing and washing are going to be my friend. Yes. <laughs> so, cool. Now you mentioned that about the sub assemblies, and we did some Warhammer pieces last week. Yep. So you finished your. But I did, yeah. Your death. Death dread. Death dread. The golf death dread. So I took it home and finished it off, and some of the little bits of detailing and that kind of thing. Did the basing. So good. So. I love I love that the basing looks so good. And you, it looks like you did the rust on the on the joints and stuff. I put a lot more rust in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It looks so good. And uh, extra chipping on some of the armor plates mm -hmm. and uh, and that sort of thing. Yeah, it looks amazing. Worked out well. I did the the hazard stripes on the the cabling as well. Oh yeah, so I see it. Yeah. Little things like that can just pick out nice the, the nice areas of extra mm -hmm. detail. Right. Um, I think are cool. Yeah, it looks very cool. Um, Craig says, sup, sup. Hey, Craig. I was thinking the same thing, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Keith says, hi, gang. And uh, Craig Stern says, it's, it's uh, Shenron. Shenron. Is that the name of the dragon from Dragon Ball Z? Shenron? I don't know. And Fabrice says, nice details. I, I don't know. know. <laughs> asking me pop culture questions? I, just, I don't know. Yeah. I, ex I exist outside of pop culture. You, I don't know about outside, but in a very, like, if it was a Venn diagram, you're in this one circle that barely touches. Anything else. Barely touches. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so today we will be giving away a uh, one of the uh, Shadow Emissaries. Yep. And in order to cool. get this sent to you, uh, we're going to use the hashtag weird. Yep. W-Y-R-D. W-Y-R-D. Yep. Because it's nice and short. Nice and short. The, the, ex, the E-I combo, <laughs> too long. Excellent. So, okay, yeah. cool. So throw weird, the weird hashtag in the in the chat. In the chats. Mm -hmm. Any of the chats. Yeah. Any of the chats. That's correct. Just the Twitch chat, the um, YouTube, YouTube chat, chat, and the uh, Facebookings chat. That's the ones. So we got For Forge and Putty and Victor are both hanging out over at uh, uh, on the YouTubers. Cool. Um, Carl. All right, Carl. Put the hashtag Don't first. Keep <laughs> hashtag weird. Love it. Very cool. Excellent. And one last thing I want to show you guys, because everybody, uh, not everybody, people have asked in multiple episodes, like, what's the biggest model you've ever painted? All oh, that stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we yeah. talked about it. And so this is the one I'm currently working on, is uh, the big five-headed dragon. And for Ooh. for scale, yeah. <laughs> for scale, there's the weird miniature. <laughs> Nice. Which is amazing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Show them the, uh, the stonework you've already... Forged in putty? Yes, that is all you have to do. Hashtag weird. Um, but yeah, so the, the stonework, it came in two pieces. And so like this one will kind of fit right here. And uh, as you can tell, I'm, I'm going with like a jade moss look on the actual stone. So the other base there will get the same treatment as this, so look alike, and then I'm gonna take some of the flocking that you've done on like the basing over there and yep. on multiple other miniatures and put some of that to give it like the overgrown look as well. That's gonna be really cool. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. And instead of doing it as a Tia mat with multiple colored heads, I'm doing it as a giant five-headed blue dragon. A venerable blue dragon? Yeah. Of some sort. Super venerable. Awesome. <laughs> Super ultra. Mm -hmm. Awesome venerable. Very cool. That's super impressive, man. Thanks. It's huge. It is. It's monstrous. It took ages just to get the base coats down. It took an entire pot of the blue. <laughs> I can see that. Yep. I was like, dang it. And then I've been looking for that same blue yeah. and cannot find it. No. Which blue was it? It is, um, well, I'm not, you put me on the spot. I'm sorry. That's okay. I don't know. I can't remember right off the top of my head. That's okay. Is. You can say that as well. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's where an airbrush can come in really handy. Yes. For saving you some time. Might not save you any extra paint, but right, <laughs> it'll save you the time. And I do have an airbrush, and it's funny is I haven't even taken it out of the box yet. There's a question in Twitch. Oh. There is. Quick, I'm running over to Twitch. To the Twitch first. I've done it. Hey, Gullen, what's up? Which weird minis are on the table today? Uh, Relic hunters are what I'm painting. Yep, and I'm painting up uh, the Shadow Emissary. This is very cool. Very easy dragon, very uh, oriental sort of uh, aesthetic. Yes. And thanks for joining us over on Twitch, by the way. Uh, that's awesome. Yep, very cool. Thank you. But uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of funny. I haven't played uh, Malifaux for a while now. No. Some time. But uh, when I was playing, I was playing Guild. Okay. Uh, which is one of the factions. And uh, I always think of the guild as kind of the most normal of the factions, the most human. Um, but uh, yeah, you, when I first started playing, I was running the Relic Hunters. Okay. Uh, guild, so I've got a bunch of those painted up. I think I brought them in when we painted the You did? The buildings. So. Yeah, you brought, I think you brought in McCabe. I did, yep. Yeah. Him standing up on the solarium, which is, very which is cool. a, uh, amazing miniature. That's one thing about these is they're so tiny and so detailed. Yep, it's crazy. 
I'm just trying to get their fleshy bits mm -mm. first before I go to the... The fleshy bits. Yeah. So I thought I'd paint all of the scales first. So I can then... Um, I can do some dry brushing and it doesn't matter if it goes onto the belly. Okay. And I'll be able to come back later with the... Hit the, uh, the belly with just some sort of standard layering and uh, highlighting. Nice. I think this guy with the pickaxe, I think I'm going to give him like a blue velvet coat. Okay, nice. Because that's this very finery in a Victorian <laughs> way, I think. Yep. What? Well, sorry. <laughs> Just twisting around and knocking the camera. Uh, Keith says, uh, doing terrain for Legion. Sweet. Excellent. And... All the hashtag weirds are going on. Um, People want free stuff. So all ten thunders. Are these these guys are part of the ten thunders, right? Because they're dual. Yeah, yeah the uh, the relic hunters are dual, so they can be ten thunders, part of the ten th thunders faction or um, the guild faction. Because in my weird miniature Malifaux miniature collection, I do have a lot of the Ten Thunder, the monks. Right, yep. Because they're just ridiculously good miniatures. They, they look fantastic, don't they? Great poses. Yeah, like the one that's on his hands with this cross splits. Yep. And I was like, jeez. <laughs> it's, like it's like whoever sculpted these watched Kung Fu Theater <laughs> right. back, yep. in, back in the day. Definitely. Definitely. How are things going? Ooh. This guy is. <laughs> Chris Rock says, I say old bean. Yes. That's the perfect line for that, uh, that guy. Well, the other miniature that we had sitting over here that uh, um, oh. the... That I, that I mistook the, for the one... The Sultan-looking guy? Yep. He looks like um, um, oh. Captain Nemo. He does. From uh, League of Extraordinary League, Gentlemen. Yeah, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. And I, my one at home, I painted this miniature. And if I were to play a League of Extraordinary Gentlemen role-playing game, yep. that would be my Nemo. He would be in there it. he is. Boom, he be done. Straight away. Yep. Sadir Alchabal is his name. It says me looking at the back of the box. Um, Gullenburst says that in third... They're changing to Thunder only. Oh, really? Okay. Looks like I'm, like I'm getting a second faction by def <laughs> default. Nice. <laughs> Fluff, he betrayed the guild massively and helped touch off the other side setting. Okay. Okay. Wow. That's some big action. That is some lore. Yep. That's something we'll have to uh, do some painting on. What's that? In the future. There's some uh, other side. Oh, yeah. Stuff. That'd be quite cool. Has anybody uh, in the chat, any of the chats, painted any of the uh, the other side models yet? Um, Carl says, hey, question. If I painted something up, say, a Torox, and wanted to auction it for charity, do you have any suggestions on how to do that without losing my sanity? <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, did I say that out loud? <laughs> I mean, you do a lot of charity works, and uh, I know that you've lost your sanity moons ago. Moons ago. Many moons. Um, the, as far as an auction for, for charity, the, the easiest way for that is to do it as a, an eBay auction and then donate the proceeds. Yeah, yeah that's right, because you can set those up as a... Uh, but you can also set those up as charities if the charity that you want to uh, associate it with is a part of the eBay family. Oh, okay. Right. And just say you, you can put a percentage towards the charity. Right. And if it's 100% towards charity, you can do that. Uh, but the important thing, particularly in the U.S., I'm not sure about laws elsewhere, but uh, you can't run a raffle unless you're a registered charity. I think, well, I think you might be able to run a raffle on a, on a location, mm -hmm. like, a single location, as long as people don't go off-site. 
Oh, then. okay. Um, but otherwise, if you're, you need to be a registered charity to, to run those things. Oh, wow. Uh, to run raffles. Interesting. So. The more you know. Yep. So that's why we've done a lot of work through the um, Nova Open Charitable Foundation, which is a registered charity. So we can sell tickets to most places around the world. Yeah. When does that all kick off again? Uh, I think that um, the planning is underway at the moment. Okay. Um, and I suspect, I think they're uh, going to be concentrating on the summer raffles this year. Okay. And uh, so that would be during, uh, tickets will be available during July and August. Okay. Um, last year, I raised, or oh, we were well, basically... Uh, wrote checks for eighty-five thousand dollars. That's amazing. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Goenberg says that they haven't painted uh, the other side yet, but have an order of Abyssia, not Wakandan, coming. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, Abyssinia. Abyssinia. Is it Abyssinia? A, a B Y S S I A. Abyssia. Right. Oh, okay. From that looks like Abyssinia. Scroll back up a little bit here. Uh, Samantha, hi Samantha, thanks for joining us. Little minis, and yet they sent the shadow emissary. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Chris Gorka's with us. Hey, Chris. Got to move. Got to move a lot in, uh, of old heavy PCs we took out of. Labs we replaced. Ah, he's oh. Chris. Yeah, he does all the la uh, computer lab stuff, the IT stuff there. Yeah, Chris was uh, doing a lot of setting up last week, I think. Mel, uh, Mel Bose. Hey, Mel. How's it going? Uh, he says the same thing in regards to charities in the UK. You have to get a license from the council. Yep. Dylan Burst asks, oh, and am I misremembering this, or did Dave used to edit the Aussie White Dwarf? Nope. You're not misremembering I used to edit the Aussie White Dwarf. Okay. Yep. <laughs> That's uh, White Dwarf Magazine, which is the, uh, the house magazine of Games Workshop. Yeah. Long time ago. In a country far, far away. When you were but a wee lad. When I was but, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Full of dreams and ideals. <laughs> Foolish. Foolish. Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm here painting with you now. <laughs> there we go. I can still be idealistic. You can, absolutely. I can still imagine that I can get this miniature painted in, <laughs> in one session. <laughs> Forge and Putty. Uh, hey, Victor, welcome. He's in uh, Ohio. What's everybody up to today? I am forging, uh, forging happy little weapons for some converse, conversions. Nice. Oh, cool. Hey, Dave, I see you mixing that shade you are painting on your palette periodically instead of all at once. How do you keep in the same shade, or are you doing it darker when you want shadows? Uh, I decided with, with this one that um, what I wanted to do was vary it mm -hmm. sort of across the, um, across the dragon with no particular sort of rhyme or reason. Okay. Um, at one point I was thinking maybe, I, yeah, I should have a bit more of the blue in the highlight er areas. I'm gonna slide this forward a little bit. There we go. So if I have a little bit more of the blue running along the tops of the, the scales here. But uh, yeah, I think I've just ended up going for a, a, like a fairly random kind of look. Nice. When I come back and do the dry brushing over the scales, I'm just going to be using the straight um, blue-green here from um, the Vallejo model color range. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to throw that right in your face. Right in the face. Right in the face. Oh, there we go. So, yeah. Um, model color. color blue-green. Um, I'll do a dry brush over that uh, of, it, of the same color. So, okay. we'll still get that variance underneath. 
right. and then mix in a little bit of the uh, ivory. Ivory. <laughs> there you go. There's a color I use a lot, Leona. Leona was complaining last week that I use the same colors all the time, so I had to try and switch it up a little bit right. today. Chris says he has, <laughs> a, he has to scoot away for a minute, but he'll be back. Cool. We'll See you, you soon, Chris. Standing by. But, uh, yeah, I, I decided not to, um, to try and get a specific sort of approach there with the, the highlights and shade, but it's one thing that you could do. Okay. Um, I think with, with this as well, as I haven't painted something, like I haven't painted this model before, so I wouldn't be exactly sure how much paint to mix. If I wanted to mix it all at the at start. Time, yeah. um, so a lot of it's really trying to keep it, uh, that mixing as you go along is a, is a skill you should sort of try to work at, um, try to build. I mean, it's a, it's a skill I don't have, for sure. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a skill you could work at. I could. And try to build. <laughs> as you go along. Yeah, as you go along. I would, I would <laughs> I recommend this. In fact, I did just... 30 seconds ago. Mm. But, I uh, think we have a glitch in the matrix. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Uh, let's see what's going there on go. over in the Twitch. Cool. I think I was a wee lad, 15 or 16 at the time. Oh, okay. Yeah, he said yeah, he didn't spell it. It is Abysnia as right. the old name for Ethiopia's kingdom. Right, yep. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, I've uh, been seeing them down at uh, games and stuff uh, on the, the new release shelf as things have been coming out. Ah. But, uh, yes, yeah, so I think that'd be cool if we get to paint some of those. I agree. That would be cool. Maybe you can reach out to Kelly. Yep. And say, hey. Hey. We would like to. So... You know, paint some stuff from the other side. Yep. He's going to get a quick base coat on this head and let the drying probably, uh, all the highlighting is going to be uh, layering work. So, go. This guy is such a fancy lad. Which was that? Oh yeah, very <laughs> dapper. Love those models. When I painted that one, the, the one with the bowler hat, I did him with a gray suit. This one here? Yeah. Okay. But uh, because it's such a, a nice sort of finely detailed miniature, I decided to go and spend a lot of time with some uh, glazes. Okay. Add in some extra sort of tones and hues. Right. So it's got some browns in it and some uh, blues and some purples. Interesting. It's like subtly hidden in the, the okay. folds of the gray. Yeah, I was looking at the rest of the the clothing that this particular miniature has, and I'm like, you know, like a brown bowler cap right. would be kind of neat, you know. Yep. Uh, very. Um, uh, did because when I look at these miniatures, a lot a lot of times, not, obviously not the shadow imagery, but like the relic hunters and others within the the uh, Malifaux range. Yep. It re it reminds me of uh, the movie The Time Machine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. In, in that Victor right at that Victorian, you know. Yeah, very definitely Victorian. You know, Victorian feel for sure. And obviously it kind of has a little bit of a steampunky flair, so yep. Wild Wild West with Will Smith would be a good... Yep. <laughs> um, Another good reference. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So that's a great question for the for the chats. Um, what's a steampunk themed um, show or comic or media that you that you've enjoyed that you would probably use as a reference when painting uh, miniatures such as these? That's a good question. I think, um, well, I mean, you, you mentioned League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's one. Uh, sure. Um, the Robert Downey Jr. Uh, Sherlock? Sherlock. Yes. Would be another one. Yeah. That's I, I love those. Not a, yep. I don't know how I feel about that that new Sherlock movie out right now. <laughs> Sherlock Step Brothers. All right, with Will Ferrell. Yeah. And John C. Riley. 
No, I haven't seen it. I've heard people have actually walked out of the theater. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Well, Oof. I I've fallen asleep in a theater before, and not necessarily because of the film. Just because of exhaustion. Yeah, I was super tired and you know, sit down in a comfortable chair in the dark. Yes. I'm not saying I did have a few drinks beforehand, but it might have happened. But I'm also not saying I did. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Actually, that was uh, funny. I. We were out with a group of friends back in Sydney. Chris Cox says, Wild Wild West is not a good anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But uh, I'll watch it anyway. What's up, Zach? Carl says there's some of this kind of aesthetic also in Firefly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's true. Actually, Firefly's got a bit more of the... It has the similar sort of mashup ideas. Mm -hmm. So... Um, yeah. Mel Bow says any British sci-fi from the 60s right <laughs> not wrong there we go. as far as comics go Lady, Lady Mechanica or Machina Lady Machina, Lady Machina. and um, sure I, uh, Folio I think is his name okay is the artist he, um, and then uh, Girl Genius right is another one there we go. I haven't read those, of course. It's all good. <laughs> I'm going to take your word for it. There we go. But yeah, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, absolutely. Yep. I can't believe how much hate Chris Cox threw out there, though, on Wild Wild West. Wild Wild West? I can believe it. I still enjoy it. I do too. I, it's a it's a fun little romp of a show. Yeah. Hellboy, Steamboy, Treasure Oh, Treasure Planet. Kind of a, again space steampunk pirates. Okay. You know the Disney. It was a Disney animated. Oh really? Okay. Movie. I did not know that one. <laughs> Chris is like, I'm just going to pass on it. <laughs> hey, Shannon, we, uh, we do not sell these, um, but you can find all these miniatures at your friendly local game store um, oh. that, that sells and, mm. and peddles in the miniature market. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, we do not sell these uh, ourselves. Yep. We just get to paint them, yeah, which is cool. Do. And it is the best. We are, however, don't forget. Right. Or if you've joined late, <laughs> we are giving away the Shadow Emissary today. So good. So you have to do is throw in, regardless of which chat you're in, if you throw in uh, the hashtag weird. W-Y-R-D. W-Y-R-D. As in weird games. The makers of Malifaux. Holla. There we go. <laughs> what was that? It was, was just that? a word. Uh, holler. <laughs> okay. Word. <laughs> cool. It's something my kids say. Is it? I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't think they do. They'd look at me and be like, we, we don't say that, Dad. You're crazy, Dad. Okay. This is funny. Now I have to hold it by the, by by the, the whiskers. mustache. <laughs> by the whiskers. <laughs> I'm going to put it down and... I need to hit it. I hold it there. Nice. There we go. Cat Swift. Hey, Cat. So you, uh, you got some more painting done on the dragon over the weekend. Yeah, the inside wings yep. I had to do, and I put this, uh, so I used this other blue to kind of hit those for the shadowing right. in there. And plus it was a blue that I had at home. Okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. What else did you get up to? Uh, this weekend, um, I did some selling of some of my personal comic book collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On Sunday, um, I do a thing on a thing called Comic Book Shopping Network on Facebook. Okay. And uh, a lot of um, 
national like retail stores do online sales on there. Okay. And I happen to be, you know, kind of lucky in that I get to do it as well as nice. a non-store entity. But right. Um, but I'm, I was telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of. I didn't tell you this. I'm kind of Kevin Smith in my comic book collection right now because okay. when Kevin Smith made Clerks, yeah, he sold off all his comic books to okay. finance making that movie. Right. So I'm kind of doing the same thing to finance making my book. book. Nice. <laughs> nice. So. Cool. Yeah. And then. Yes. Yeah, we can do that. We'll look at some minis. So these are minis from the group, the Painting Happy Little Minis Facebook group. They're almost at a thousand. We're so close. It was cool. like nine eighty-eight the last time I looked. Nine eighty-eight. Was that Art Dominguez? Art Dominguez, an outlaw mini for Western Legends. I have this game. Yeah. Uh, I kickstarted this. It is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Is that a board game? It is a board game. Cool. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, Chris Cox painted up some Imperial Rebel. Uh, not Imperial Rebels. Some Rebels. Some standard. Star Wars Rebels. <laughs> From uh, Imperial Le from Legion, right? Yep. Yeah. So these are, it's, it's standard rebels. I'm guessing that they're, they're not aliens. Actually, they've got the uh, the crazy fusion guns, haven't they? It looks like they do. Yeah. So a little bit special there. Clive Mills painted up a WizKids Griffin. Oh, Very that's, nice. Yeah, it looks. I love that base. The base looks amazing. Yep. I mean, the whole that thing looks, looks cool. amazing, but that base is killing it. Yep. Very nice. Fabrice Lamorsolac. The Marathi are those, and oh, and the, he, he also yep. did some frost giants. Yep, I think um, we got a little bit of a problem with some of the captions. Are these the Marathi here? No. Those are the under hivers. No. Those are frost giants. Uh, that under hive hiver is a label from last week. Yeah. Jordan Besson. Bess <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Jordan Basinski's daughter painted her first character miniature, and that was it right there. Yep. In the group, he showed a picture of her actually working on it. Yeah. And it was, yeah, I was like, that's adorable. Yeah. And Jordan painted the, uh, the... Pegasaurs? The, the, the pe Pegacorn. Pegacorn. Yep. The winged unicorn. Kevin St. Pierre? Nice. He's working on some skeletons. I think he's working on a whole bunch of them. Yeah. I was talking to him uh, yesterday, actually, because I had posted up a picture of my D and D group yep. uh, using the Roll Twenty system, and where Fabrice is my DM, yep. as I've mentioned before, and uh, Kevin Sapir was just like, "What is this? What is, you know?" So <laughs> we had a really great chat. Uh, nice. Nate, Nate Webster on the last mini that was shown there. Um, yep. I'm not sure what these are. These are cold oil gangers. Okay. These these are under hivers. Under hivers. Okay. Yep. Well, they're the cold oil gangers from uh, Necromunda. Nice. And they live in the Underhive. They look good. Yeah, very nice. Brian Meacham. Brian Meacham. Orc Champion. Is G that Studio. version one? Is that like old school orc? Uh, I don't know. G I don't recognize Studio. it, but, uh, but it looks mm. really cool. It had a very uh, World of Warcraft feel about it. Yeah, it did. So. And then that last one was a hill giant. I'm not sure. Oh. The owner's just racing through them. So Sean, <laughs> th this was really cool. So he took the WizKids unicorn and painted it as a uh, nightmare unicorn. Right. Which okay. was really nice with cool. the flames and everything. Oh, okay. Cool. I was wondering if there was... It... What? Don't, don't get angry with me, Sean, but I was wondering if there was going to be like a little cutie mark on the other side. Oh, like on the, like, on the like back little, end there, uh, a little like pony? My little pony thing? Yeah. That would have been cool. <laughs> But no, I think it's fine that it's not there as well. Wayne oh. T. West. Han Solo. Nice. Uh, Emperor Palpatine. Palp yep. And... <laughs> Chris Gorka with Mink Skin Boo. Mink Skin Boo. Can I, can I just say something? Yes. Which is kind of crazy, particularly about like this. So this version of the miniature. Yeah. That, uh, so this paint job by Chris. This is the first time that I realized because mm -hmm. I don't know who Minsk and Boo are. Okay. I thought it was like the guy and his sword. Mm hmm. But is it the, like, this it's hamster? A, it's the space hamster the on his shoulder. The space hamster on his shoulder. It's Boo. So I, in all the other pictures of this model that I've looked at, I've never seen that hamster. Really? Yeah. I don't know. And it must be the, uh, like, the orange against the blue. It it's might that be. The contrast that's really popping for me. So. So I feel, when I saw that, I was just like, how did I, 
how did I not see it in so, all of the other miniatures that I've seen? <laughs> Boo is in all the other miniatures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's there. I just never saw it. So Ming Skin Boo is from <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. Yep. It, this is a Gale Force 9 miniature. And this particular miniature is, our character is from Baldur's Gate. Right. And yep. uh, one of the audio pieces to his character in the video game is, go for the eyes, boo. Because <laughs> the space hamster is like the rabbit from the Quest for the Holy Grail. Right, okay. In that yep. it will just destroy you. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> And I, nice. I want to say that Minsk is a ranger. Okay. I'm almost sure that's what he was. One more. Oh, okay. one more. Oh, yeah. Oh, these oh. are cool. My Little Scythe. Yep. Yeah. Chris Shane. I, yeah, so these, these, are, these are adorable. Yeah, he did a great job. It, and I love how it, he popped the colors to make them look animated, cartoony. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, they look great. Cool. Very cool. Thank nice. you, Leona. Thank you. Yay. Yeah, those are great. So good job, everybody in the group. If you are not a part of our group yet, you can join it on Facebook. Just type in the search bar, Painting Happy Little Minis, and you can request to join. We'll add you in there. And we will. You can show off all the things you paint. So on the um, Facebook chat, uh, Shannon says, I'm a painter, but I use acrylics and oils. Does this require any specific paint? So miniature paints are also acrylic. Yep. Um... So they're not the same kind of acrylic you'd use on canvas. They are a different... Um... They're uh, like a finer pigment, okay. I think, um, generally, uh, generally speaking. But I mean, when I first started um, painting back when I was a before starving college student, mm -hmm. I was um, doing graphic design. Right. So we had a lot of, we had paints that we were using there, so like gouache. Gouache? Gouache. What the heck is that? Is that something that will kill you in Australia? No. No, it's one of the few things that won't kill you in Australia. Oh, okay. But, uh, no, it's a um, it's a very thick um, sort of paste you squeeze out of a tube. and It's, okay. a, it's, a, it's acrylic. It's a, um, water-soluble. Okay. But... Uh, yeah, it has that, that consistency. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, until like I'd been painting, I painted for two or three years with my white, the white that I used right. was gouache. Oh, okay. Yeah. For miniatures? Well, it wasn't specifically formulated for miniatures. But you were using it for miniatures? I was miniatures. using it on miniatures, yeah. Okay, that's neat. Because I was cheap. Wouldn't those paints be more expensive than these paints? Uh, no, they're about the same. Oh, okay. But, sorry, the, the tube was about the same price as a... As a pot? pot of paint, but okay. there was uh, like three times as much in it. Oh, nice. So, and I needed to use it for school. Okay. As well. That makes sense. So it was okay to buy. But, uh, yeah, so um, in your local uh, gaming store, you'll generally find racks and racks of acrylic paints that are all kind of formulated for, for painting miniatures. So you can uh, use those. You can mess around. There, there are people who paint with um, apple barrel right. craft paints. Um, it's really, really up to you, sort of how you want to approach it. The, uh, the paints that we use here, we use a mix of uh, paints from Vallejo, from Games Workshop, uh, the Army Painter, uh, and a couple of others as well. Yeah. But they're the uh, sort of the paints that we you'll find use. readily available in your local gaming store. Yeah, and we tend to use uh, Citadel, Vallejo, and Army Painter mostly here. That's what on, I just on said. The show. On the show. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's what, what you just said. said. Yeah. Man, there's a glitch in the Matrix today. <laughs> 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 Sorry about that. <laughs> That's funny. I am, because I was there. You were paying attention <laughs> to, the, to the chats. Yeah, and cool. also looking for this particular blue. Uh -huh. Shout out to Reaper. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, let's, here's, here's that big dragon again. Yep. <laughs> nice. Hashtag <laughs> Reaper. Hashtag Reaper. Yeah, Reaper paints are pretty good uh, from the pot. Yep. And they're called, uh, well, what's, 
Reaper Master Series. Re Reaper Master Series, but there's also that um, there's P3, which oh, is Privateer Press. Privateer yep. Press P3. Line. Chris says he uses that. Mini Painting Studios is in the house. And uh, Gullenberg says that they use P3, Vallejo, and GW for paint. Yep. Let's go over to the tubes of you or Ewing and see what's going on there. Okay. Uh, Fortune Putty says, uh, "What's everyone up to today?" I'm forging happy little weapons. We got that. Happy day. I'm making the shade. You're painting on the palette. We did that. Uh, Fortune Putty says, "Boo is a miniature giant space hamster found yep. uh, after Minx had suffered quite a blow to the head." And yes, Minx is a ranger. Cool. Nice. I'm glad I got that right. Cool. I'm just going to pop the uh, pop the dragon on the spinner for a little bit, so you can see how he's come out with the. Um the uh, dry brush. So, there nice. we go. Looking pretty good. Absolutely. What I'm, what I think I'm going to do is pick out a few. Uh, actually, I'm going to get some more of the blue green. Mix it with some of the ivory. Do like a highlight dry brush, and then I'll hit it with some. Of the dark green wash that we've got here to uh, shade down some other areas. So, Go ahead. Boink. All right. Cool. Reaper used to have three paint lines. Now it's the Bones HD line only. Okay. Is that just, uh, is that Bones HD line or rebranding of the Masters, Probably. Masters series? Carl says that uh, he thought that the Reaper naming their new paint line Bones was a bit of a misstep. I know they're trying mm -hmm. to capitalize on the good name of Bones, but it's confusing. Uh, right. Yep, same stuff rebranded. Right. One of the things that uh, the Reaper did quite a lot of with the um, with their paint or well, does quite a lot of with their paint line is uh, triads. What's that? So three, three colors, uh, like a um, base color, a shade, and a highlight. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to do um, Caucasian skin, there might be a Caucasian triad. Oh, okay. If you want to like a bright scarlet, there'll be a scarlet triad. Okay. Um, so it takes some of the guesswork out of um, what colors you're going to use to to shade and highlight. Okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, War Games Foundry, or a um, company out of the UK that did that as well. A lot of uh, a triad approach. Okay. What I'm curious is, I wish that someone from the uh, from Weird was in the chat today. I, I, I would ask them, uh, in regards to their miniatures, what do they usually use to paint them in 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 uh, in house? Right. Because that'd be an interesting bit of information. It would be. There we go. Yeah, put that back on the spinner for a little bit. Really good. It's only one model currently closer to HPS plastic. I haven't seen Bones Black. I will keep an eye open for it, or likely just order it. Yeah. Okay. Nice. There we go. So I've caught uh, caught some of the that extra highlight there. And Leona's messing around with the camera. What's she doing? I was trying to darken it. Okay, add a little bit more contrast. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think it has. Yep. Forged in Putty. Cool. Thank you. Uh, sorry, so, uh, Forged in Putty over on YouTube asks Dave. Yep. I wanted to try the War Games Foundry paints for a while now, but yep. can't find them here in the states. Do you know if anyone carries them? Uh, I do not. Um, I, I'm trying to think if I. The last time I might have seen them would have been at a show like Historicon or. Um, Cold Wars or something like that. Um, Up in Lancaster. In Lancaster, but I don't, I don't remember having seen them in the last couple of years. Okay. It might mean you need to actually 
order direct from uh, from Foundry uh, online. Okay, that was a great question. Yep, I think they are um, the Foundry paints. I think they're made by Cote d'Arms, who are French okay. paint manufacturer, who also have their own line and also d used to do the manufacturing for Games Workshop's paints. Oh wow! Back in the day. In the day. Back in the day. And by back in the day, I mean more than... 20 years ago? More than 12 years ago. Oh, okay. 15 years ago. So... Nice. But yeah. And they have the same style uh, paint pots as well. Those flip tops? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Like so that the, Earth, the, Athrax, Earth shade right there in front Oh, of no, no, no. Not, not like that, sorry. Not that style of flip top. But the... Sorry, I'm just going to dig around in my... Boxo paint. Boxo paints. I can't find one that I'm looking for. Mm. No. Like the old school. A little bit more like the P3 paints. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Okay. Let's ignore that then. <laughs> um, Carl says, "Oh, right. Bones black is their new material, not a new paint." Right. I okay. like the fact weird doesn't show. Painted miniatures, it allows your imagination to run wild. Yeah. Yep. And Carl was wondering, doesn't Coat of Arms do P3? Um, possibly, yeah. I think the, the paint pots, at least, are the same, the same style. Um, Mike McVeigh was heavily involved with the creation of the P3 paint line. Okay. And Mike McVeigh used to work for... Games Workshop, Games Workshop <laughs> and I think probably had a lot to do with their paint line. Okay. So, um, Dylan Burst uh, put a link up on on Twitch showing, um, but we we can't go to that link right now while we're streaming. But uh, it's a it's a Kingdom Death some Kingdom Death miniatures. Okay. So uh, what I would recommend going is go when you get an opportunity go back to Facebook, uh, and yeah. on Facebook. Join our group, painting happy little minis, and we and you can uh, upload your images of your paint, wh whatever projects you're working on. I would love to see Kingdom Death, more Kingdom Death in right. there. Uh, those miniatures are ridiculously amazing. They are gorgeous. Yeah. So, and then that's it's also a great group for if you have any questions on techniques or if you have some techniques that you want to share. Um, yep. We we Can all help? love seeing and hearing those things. Definitely. Okay. Do, do, do. This is fun. What? This is fun taking this. Uh, it was a really dark green ink. Yeah. And just get it in, in shot there, and just sort of dabbing it into some of the the scales. The scales, just in around the. The, shade, the areas that need the shading. Right. That's cool. So, not doing it as a wash over the whole piece. I'm looking at these guys going, man, th <laughs> there's some West Side Story stuff going on with these miniatures. What, the swagger? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're getting ready to get into a street gang fight. It's real. Yep. Definitely. They are great models of them. Yeah. You can tell by the way I walk, I'm a Mormon's man. No time to talk. That's what this guy's singing right here. Really? Yeah. That's what he's singing? Yeah, a little Bee Gees action. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man. What? Nothing. Nothing. The guy with the chains wrapped around his, his forearms and then his fists. Right. Yeah. Yep. That's the song he sings. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, I'm not sure uh, who else, where else in the country? Nowhere. Nowhere? Oh, lower. There we go. <laughs> um, the people got snow over the weekend. I think they spent a couple of hours out in it on uh, Sunday. Oh, yeah. And my daughter's uh, sledding, which was pretty cool. They had a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, we got, what, like three or four inches? Yeah, something like that. three or four inches. Just enough to make sure that schools were closed. 
perfect. Yeah. There we go. Okay. That's all right there. I will say I was happy to see snow. I like the cold weather anyways, so yep. <laughs> anytime a little snow comes down, I'm just like, yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay. I know we haven't got a lot of a lot of time left. No. So I'm not going to try and get the whole of his belly done. Uh, there was a question about the belly. Um, oh, yeah. What belly color is Dave going to use? Should we vote? <laughs> <laughs> no. You, yes, vote. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, an it says evil grin. Yellowish off white. Okay. I was thinking a brownish yellow with gold highlights. Right. I got seven inches of snow Saturday. Dang, Carl, lucky. Yep. And uh, must be nice. The most we've gotten here is a few flurries. Uh, Boo. All right. Okay, so what I'm thinking is uh, for the belly is some beige brown, which is a common one that I use a lot, Leona. Ivory, highlighting up to ivory. But what I'm going to mess around with is on the sort of the, the point where the belly here meets the scales, the scale line there, is rather than just running the, the brown sort of right up to it there, let me get it in the right spot. Like that. It takes some of the that blue green, nice. Mix it a bit with the brown. Start to muddy it up a bit. Paint that in. Just to get a bit more of a transition going on. There we go. You can see it a little bit better up there. Or I haven't polluted it with the brown. It's miniature. Maybe. Huh? It's miniature. <laughs> Did you give him jeans? Yeah. Blue jeans. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I was going to say, I think we didn't have blue jeans in it. Okay, yeah, maybe they did. Yeah, I mean, they had blue jeans in the 1800s. Yeah, you're correct. Well, no. They might have had denim, but they didn't have blue denim. jeans until, yeah, like... Yeah, that's what I meant, denim. The, did you say 1800s? Yeah, like 1880s? Yeah, so it's like, well, actually in the, yeah, 1850s, I think, they were created. So... So they'd be more like dungarees. Probably. But not stonewashed. Well, Leona was very quick to <laughs> tell me they did not. 1873. 73, there we go. Right. Okay, so that's, that's Victorian. Yep. But he's not wrong. Yes, I was. Quiet silence from Leona. I'm always uh, wrong. Yeah, that's true. Okay. How's that looking there? As it looks, always is. Looks a bit too green. So, throw a little more brown in there. All right. I'm gonna mess around and just throw the brown in the, in the shadows there in the folds. I think doing the, the sort of random patches mm -hmm. kind of feel adds to the sort of the magical feel, the magical nature of the creature idea. Yeah, that the that the colors might have a little bit more of a like a, an ethereal a, quality. Yeah, yeah, iridescent even. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, maybe that. Ooh, that doesn't look good. That color looks terrible. Ugh. I was watching. Huh? I said, don't put the white in it. Yeah, I'm going to. I'm just going to see how it looks over here. 
It might look a little bit better. You mean the ivory? Don't put the ivory in? Like a um, little bit more like uh, like this. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying I jump, I sort of jump too quickly. I think so. Okay. So it, you've watched Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, right? Uh, not all of it, surprisingly enough. The f what are you about to say there? Go for it. The in the first in the first one. Right. You've got the, th is it the Thunderbird? I don't know. Hmm? No, sorry. I've had to lift it up a little bit higher to get my... But there's that big multi-winged eagle looking creature. Okay. Right here. Is that the Thunderbird? I think it's the Thunderbird. But when, like, when uh, Newt, New, like, pets it, yep. it kind of, like, has this, like, sparkly energy oh, through the, okay, through the right feathers. Here. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was thinking. Right, you were kind yep. of kind of going for. Kind of going for there. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to check that out. Yeah, it's weird. We haven't looked at those yet. I think we're waiting until we've got all the way through the books. And, okay, and that makes sense. Thing. Then we'll spend a little bit more time with the the others, the extended extended universe. Noise, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. So we've only got about three minutes left in the program. Okay. And uh, we'd just like to throw one last shout out there to everybody watching. If you'd like to win a uh, box right there, the Shadow Emissary, yep. make sure you do the hashtag weird. Uh, in the chat on any one of the platforms, be it YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch. And that's W-Y-R-D. Mm -hmm. Not weird like Rick. Hey. <laughs> it was there. Uh, Gullenberg says, uh, no snow here in Calgary. 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 Just oh, wow. 45 Celsius and raining. Jeez, man. Steve says... Uh, it's going to be crazy hot there this year. Weird. Hashtag weird. Leona the Terrible. <laughs> yep. They're giving you like uh, Leona the Distant oh, Echo. Yeah. No, you're getting you're getting like these like titles. <laughs> Leona the Distant Echo. Leona uh, the, the I'm afraid, afraid to, to rap, rap battle, battle <laughs> producer. Okay. Yep. Leona, Leona the Ruined Brush. Leona will smack you down. I like that. Leona of the Ruined Brush. <laughs> You're yep. literally getting titles. I love that. Yep. Nice. Good work. Chris says, I, have, I think he's referring to me as I almost have uh, the German field gray. Or is that you? No, that's you. That oh. Maybe he thinks that this is I'm down here. Field, German field gray. Uh, it's got that kind of element to it. Yeah, like a desaturated green gray. Yeah. I think that might be the... Hey the Kelly, issue I need to work with. Um, we are working on some uh, Malifaux miniatures by Weird. Uh, they are. I'm working on Relic Hunters, and yep. Dave is doing the Shadow Emissary. Shadow Emissary, very cool. Dragon. Dragon. Yep. Where's his head? Yoink. <laughs> on the, on the spinner. spinner. Okay. Spinner, spinner, chicken dinner. I'll put it there in a sec. Okay. There we go. It's coming out okay. Yeah. It looks better on the spinner. Maybe I should paint everything on the spinner. <laughs> Just wait until it goes around. On the stroke, <laughs> rush stroke at a time. I like the fact that we get to work on these some more on on Thursday. Yeah. Because I did not get very far. On any of you did a little bit of it on everything, didn't you? Yeah, a little bit on everybody. Just a little bit. Okay. You ready to put them up? Yeah. So. Here's one first. This, so that guy reminds... Oh, there's another good movie that we didn't reference. is uh, Van Helsing. All right. Okay. Because that guy look, reminds me of the uh, the the guy, who, the grave digger. Oh, okay. You know? oh, yeah. Yep. And I guess if you're going that, you've got to go um, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Of course. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Gary, with Gary Oldman as... Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, what a great character actor he is. Oh yeah, he's perfect. Anything, anything, mm -hmm. you name it, yeah. you can play it. Absolutely. So yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm glad we get to work on these some more on Thursday because I didn't get very far. But yeah, you could definitely have a West Side Story feel going on yeah. with the guy with the chains. <laughs> Leather jacket, yeah. jeans. <laughs> nice. Steve says, nice painting. Kelly, thank you so much. Uh, Josh Jeppies joined the group. I don't know. I don't oh. know who that guy is. <laughs> Talk about late. <laughs> this seems better than Twitch. Oh. Uh, I, Jawmax, uh, was running out of battery on my phone, but you guys are everywhere. <laughs> yep. Thanks, man. <laughs> Hashtag cool. weird. Hashtag weird. <laughs> All right. So that's uh, that's our show today, everybody. We appreciate everybody that joined us and shared and is a participant here. Where yep. should we go if we want to pick up some of these great miniatures? To your local game store. That's a fact. That's true. Go to yep. your friendly local game store. Become part of the community there. Yeah. Get stuck into doing some painting at the painting table. Always. If they've got one, if they don't have one, get them to set one up. Yeah. Help them set one up. Become the champion of uh, in-store painting. Yep. And, uh, that Run is, some classes. Yeah. Do all sorts of craziness. And don't forget to join our group, Painting Happy Little Minis, on Facebook. Yep. Um, we also have a Discord now. I'll put a link to the Discord in the chat after here. Yep. So if you haven't joined our Discord, you can do that. Cool. Um, and there's different channels within our uh, Game Trade Media channel that you can join up if you just want to be in the Painting Happy Little Minis or Building Character, Board Games Beyond, and others. Excellent. Um, so there's Perfect. lots of that going on. Uh, so nice. I'm Rick. And I'm Dave. And we'll see you at the game store. Watching painting happy little minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.